Hi everybody, welcome to Cake International Carnival. I'm so excited to be here. I'm Chef Nicholas Lodge, live from Atlanta, Georgia. Thank you to Rosie, Cake Diva, for the lovely introduction. I miss you and all of my other friends at Cake International. Now, with Carnival theme, uh, being also that I am Cake International's US representative, I decided to focus on one of the world's top um, carnivals in uh, New Orleans, which is Mardi Gras. Um, I'm just going to take my mask off. It's a little bit difficult to talk a bit like a face mask. <laughs> so just pop that over there. But um, so Carnival is obviously around the world, Rio, Venice, uh, Notting Hill in London. There are many amazing carnivals. And also there are carnivals in many countries you wouldn't think of, like Nice in France, in Germany, and other countries. Um, in New Orleans, um, which is the southern part of the United States, Louisiana, they have every year um, obviously Mardi Gras. I've been several times and I've got quite a collection of beads. You can see these ones here. I know Rosie would like these, I'm sure. But uh, I'm going to take these off. <laughs> it's just a little difficult to talk and obviously pop those there. And um, obviously um, Mardi Gras is uh, held actually on uh, Fat Tuesday. Fat Tuesday, if you translate it into French, is Mardi Gras. And that is also the same day in the UK where you celebrate Shrove Tuesday. Um, so Fat Tuesday or Shrove Tuesday is the day before Ash Wednesday. And uh, this is the day before Lent. So basically it's a party to eat and drink. And obviously each of the countries, like in Rio, in Venice, they all have sort of themes and special foods that they use and prepare uh, for their festivities. I'm just gonna take my waistcoat off now. <laughs> I'm not going any further, okay? <laughs> so let's take those off. But so Mardi Gras has set a unique um, festival and uh, it's uh, obviously you can do some research on it if you're not familiar with it, but they have some amazing foods and obviously uh, colors of Mardi Gras, purple, yellow or gold, and then green. Those are the three colors. Bringing in here a few of my beads I've collected on trips to New Orleans. So Mardi Gras has several things that are um, obviously we use and signify, obviously signify Mardi Gras. So for example, the fleur de lis, all right? Uh, fleur de lis is a sign of French royalty. Um, it's used, of course, a lot in France, but also because uh, Louisiana is French Creole and uh, its roots were from France. The, uh, this is a, so obviously an insignia that's used a lot for um, obviously all sorts of things in New Orleans. This is actually the Saints, the football team of New Orleans, the um, New Orleans Saints. That is their logo as well. Also, you have other fun things like alligators, all right? So this is obviously very much part of the swamps of Louisiana. Louisiana. Uh, you have crawfish. This is one of the festivals, obviously, that has to eat. Uh, crawfish is like a langoustine, and uh, sometimes it's called a mug, a mud bug, and uh, they um, obviously are very, very popular. And they're used in things like gumbo, which is a soup, and lots of other sort of French Creole dishes. So, uh, so very uh, fun. Um, so I'm going to sort of use that as my inspiration on my uh, piece I'm going to show you. Of course, other things um, we think of New Orleans and Mardi Gras as masks. So like in Masquerade, or for example, Venetian Carnival, um, obviously use a lot of masks. So these come in lots of different types. And obviously this one here, you can see in the colors of uh, Mardi Gras. And I'm going to use that as sort of an inspiration to show you some ideas. So, going to get started. So first of all, um, if you go to nicholaslodge.com, uh, nicholaslodge.com, going to click on recipes and templates, and there you will find um, there's lots of recipes and downloads and templates and uh, instructions for lots of different flowers. So you'll see there, there is Cake International Carnival Mardi Gras download, and there is also a download a template of the actual mask I'm going to use. And then there also is, uh, there you'll find a download for modifying rolled fondant or sugar paste, which I'm going to talk about in a moment. And uh, also there are other things like a downloadable size guide as well, if you don't have one of those. So I'm going to um, focus the focal point on the cake. It's going to be a mask. And uh, I went on to Google and I just typed in Mardi Gras free download masks. So obviously lots of different templates there, butterflies and lots of different shapes. And uh, I sort of obviously enlarge that and enlarge it again. And this is going to go on to a five inch cake. So this is gonna fit a five inch or a 12 and a half centimeter cake. Of course, you could of course enlarge this uh, design that's on the templates. 
Okay, so there is uh, the pattern for we're going to use. I've just uh, cut this out in paper. You could do this obviously in cardstock or plastic, like I use a plastic placemat. And for this, I'm going to use, um, in this demonstration, I'm going to use some black sugar paste or rolled fondant. This is the Renshaw America's Black 250 gram pack. Um, alternatively, you can use, those of you in the UK and Europe, uh, you can use the Renshaw Dahlia Black uh, flour and modeling paste, all right? Uh, because obviously this has already got gum in it, it's gonna dry hard, but I'm gonna show you how to modify uh, the sugar paste using uh, Tylos or CMC. Now, um, in your download, so the download has got all of the information in, the recipe has got to have, um, and as I said, there is a download that specifically deals with modifying sugar paste or rolled fondant. Now, usually um, when I modify the sugar paste or rolled fondant to use, for example, for um, putting and pressing into molds, for example, when I show like things like pearl molds, when I do ribbons like on a Tiffany box cake, I would normally modify the recipe is in the download, 115 grams of sugar paste or rolled fondant and a quarter of a teaspoon of tylos or CMC and a quarter of a teaspoon of vegetable fat or shortening. And uh, when I'm making this mass, because I want it to dry hard and fairly quickly, I'm gonna double the amount of tylos. So as you will see on that download, it actually was 115 grams, you'll put in half a teaspoon of tylos. Because I don't need such a big amount, I'm gonna do half this recipe. Now, so half of obviously 115 is 57.5 grams. So if you do have a high precision scale, um, like this uh, type of scale, this will scale in one tenth of a gram. If you don't, just use 60 grams, all right? And uh, so I'm just gonna put my digital scale on. And uh, as she said, so it's 57.5 grams, all right? So 57.5 grams. But as I say, 60 grams is not gonna be a big difference. So what we then do, we're taking your paste, kind of just, this is just the sugar paste or the fondant. Of course, you could also color your black, uh, white, sugar paste or fondant black. So what I'm gonna do is, um, because I want to uh, do in half the recipe, I would uh, gonna use, um, obviously, for to turn this into comparable to flour paste or what we call in the US gum paste, I'm gonna use a quarter of a teaspoon of uh, Tylos. All right, so I'm gonna use a quarter of a level teaspoon of Tylos. And I may generally make a little cup. And then I'm going to add to that. I'm going to add here about comparable amount of vegetable fat or shortening. Now in the US uh, brands we use, most popular brand is Crisco. Uh, Crisco um, is very creamy. You can now buy it in the UK, like Tesco's and some supermarkets in the UK do sell it. But it's a little bit, uh, doesn't have to be kept refrigerated. It's basically shelf stable in ambient temperature. Um, and uh, it doesn't get sort of watery like Trex does when it's out of the fridge. So a lot of cake artists now in the UK use uh, Crisco. So what I'm gonna do is just gonna take these two components and of course put gloves on if you want to for this. And we're going to just combine the tylos with that. I'm using a little corn flour, corn starch here in a little pouch. And then I'm just gonna make, make sure you knead this through. But this will be enough for the project I'm showing you. And also of course you'll have some over, but um, if of course you were doing a bigger mask or several projects, you could of course, or a couple of masks, um, you could of course make um, the recipe, which would be 115 grams, twice this amount, and of course half a teaspoon of tylose to turn it into, as I said, a flour paste or a gum paste. Um, because when on the recipe, the download recipe for modifying the fondant, when I normally use it for, say, ribbons or things like that, where I don't want it to dry as quickly or so hard. So uh, really what we've done, we've converted, we've modified the sugar paste or fondant now, so it is comparable to a flour paste or gum paste, all right? Now generally you just pop that into a little bag while you get everything ready. So that's, uh, and as I said, if an alternative would be to use the Renshaw uh, flour modeling paste. And this you just are going to, generally speaking, I normally when I use this product, um, I would just take, take off what you need, put it into a zip top bag, microwave it for about five seconds, that's gonna warm it a little bit, and then you're gonna add the vegetable fat, all right? So add some vegetable fat to basically condition the product and that will give you the uh, comparable effect. Um, because I'm gonna use a food dehydrator, which I have behind me to dry this, um, uh, both of them will take comparable amount of time to dry, so it's really whatever you have available to you. Now we're going to um, 
This is the mask pattern. I'm going to use my pasta machine. All right, so I'm going to use my KitchenAid pasta machine here. And the KitchenAid pasta machine, uh, this has obviously got one through um, eight. And uh, generally I use pasta machine for everything I roll out flat. When I make flowers, like with my flower pro, things like cutters, when I'm doing uh, ribbons, drapes, bows, because you get consistency of thickness. You can, of course, also buy one to go on a Kenwood. Um, you can also buy a hand crank one as well, which is a little less expensive if you don't have a heavy duty stand mixer that's an alternative to use. But they're very reasonable to buy the use of clay and ceramic, ceramic work for craft, but also uh, for making pasta. And uh, so I'm gonna use this, and I'm gonna use this number one on the pasta machine. So I'm gonna take my paste here, so I'm going to um, have ready the pattern. I'm going to use a um, self-healing mat here. Uh, this is obviously because you don't want to ever cut with a sharp scalpel or exacto knife on a plastic surface because you would destroy it. So I'm going to use, um, as I said, uh, um, obviously a green, uh, it doesn't have to be green, um, but this is an exacto knife or uh, obviously scalpel. And we're going to use that. So what I'm going to do, so I've just kneaded that into a basic block. You don't have to really let this sort of set any amount of time because we're going to dry this, as I said, in a food dehydrator. But just going to roll this out to about the size of the mask. So I've sort of calculated this based on this size. If you get any little air bubbles um, in your fondant or paste, this little air bubble here, this is a, an acupuncture needle, uh, something I use in my classes for fondant work. I just go into the acupuncture needle and that will expel the air. This is really good as well if you have the air bubble up here, like for example, like the next day on your cake, um, you can use that and obviously it will get rid of the, the little air bubble. So I'm just going to bring my pasta machine down so you can just see. So I'm going to put it on, you should put it on speed number four. Now I just will feed this through the pasta machine. This is our number one. You can go through a second time if you want to. That just evens up the paste. And what this is going to do, it's going to give me my pattern. Now I'm going to put this onto, as I said, my self-healing mat. I'm going to take my pattern. As you see, we've got more than enough for what we need. I'm just going to just sort of uh, press it on just gently with a sponge. I'm using a cosmetic sponge and that will just sort of make it almost like adhere to the paste. And then the idea is you're going to cut around. Now you shouldn't, um, if you have any problem with it dragging, what I do is put a little bit of fat on my fingers and just gently put a little bit of fat carefully, obviously coming towards you like that on the blade. So you're just gonna cut round like this. Now you do the same the other side, all right? And then um, what you would do is I'm gonna use a little elliptical cutter. This is actually um, a little elliptical shape cutter, like a paddle shape cutter, you can see there. Um, and it's made to go, um, in a mold. This actually was designed, it's a jewel insert. Um, this is a mold that I designed many years ago for a cake uh, border. And this is basically to make like gemstones out of gum paste or flower paste. But there are several different companies that have elliptical cutter shapes for craft as well. Um, and if you, of course you don't have a cutter, you're just gonna cut around the eyes as well. All right, I'm just gonna do this, this very quickly because I'm going to, I've already got one ready to go on to the next stage. All right, so what I do is I'm just gonna mark here, just gonna mark with my cutter. You cut the, take this out. Now, of course, you know, there's lots of other times that you might use, um, use this technique. You're doing a birthday cake for a little boy, a superhero. Um, you know, there's lots of different, as I say, masks you can use uh, for Halloween. You know, there's sort of like different, different sort of occasions you could use a mask for. And then I, what I would do is you're then gonna go back in with the cutter. I'm just gonna cut out the eyes. And then once I take the eyes out here. Now because fondant, uh, gum fondant, rolled fondant is a uh, sugar paste is something a little fibrous, you can, I use my, my companion tool 
or you can use a pin, a straight pin. And this, um, you just run, run this around the edge of the, and that will get rid of like any little fuzzies you have on there, like a little rough on the edge. But also using the, um, using the scalpel with a little bit of vegetable fat on will help as well. All right, so you just go around all of, obviously all the way around that. Then I'm going to take now, um, this is a piping tip uh, t nozzle, number nine size, okay? Um, I'm using number nine or you can use a number seven. So either a number nine or a number seven, generally I've used a number seven on mine, but it says seven or nine could be used. And then you're gonna cut, because of course usually on a mask you would have. And then you can just round the edge there a little bit. Just make a like, slight round edge there like so. All right, so of course you do that on both sides. Next thing we would do then um, is going to be to move on to the next stage, which is going to be to dry this. So I'm using a cake dummy the size that I'm going to make the cake, all right? So if you were making a 12 and a half centimeter, five inch cake, this is a five inch cake dummy, 12 and a half centimeter. I've just put this into a rental fondant or bucket or a bucket. Um, you can also use, for that, you can use a crepe foam as well. It will sit also, it will just sit onto a crepe foam, convoluted foam former like this. That will stop it sliding around. But usually a bucket or a container is the best way to go. And then all you're going to do, you take this off, lay this onto there, like so. If you're worried about it sliding, you can take pins, all right? So you can, for example, I'm going to put decorations here. So you can just take a pin, put a little bit of vegetable fat or shortening on it, and you can just pin that there, and you can do one each side if you wish to, all right? And uh, so what, what it will look like, so I'm just going to, Got one already made here. So it would be like this, all right? So this one is complete and you see you've got the two holes there. Now then I will um, come, come in to behind me. I've got my food dehydrator. This is a, a food dehydrator. I have it set at 115 or 45 uh, degrees centigrade. So, and then what you would do is you just would put this in. So you just would put that into the food dehydrator and I would leave it in there for two or three hours. All right, then after about two or three hours, what I normally do is I would take it out of the food dehydrator. Just gonna turn this off. Because remember also when you, when you um, are going to, when it sits on the foam dummy, it's not going to, as I said, dry. Totally on the back. And then after about two or three hours, you would take that. And all I do is I just rest it on some convoluted uh, unfortunately, it's the same color as the mask, but uh, nearly. But you just lay it on there to dry. And that means the air will then get to the back of it, or you could just leave it like that to dry upside down, okay? And uh, that, that is sort of the first step of uh, making the mask. But remember, this could be a superhero mask, and of course, you can do some really fun shapes. As I said, on download, you can get the butterfly shape and other things as well. So remember, the mask template, if you want to use that particular template, is on the download. So now I'm um, going to move on to next things. So working through the, um, working through the instructions, all right, next thing I'm going to talk about is going to be tappets. Now these are um, FMM products, all right, they are called tappets, and uh, I actually call them wackets because you have to whack them more than you tap them, but they've been out a long time, um, and there's obviously lots of different designs, and they're always bringing out new ones. Uh, this particular set I'm using here is called Cheeky Accessories. And I'm using a little masquerade mask on here. So there's a little tiny mask. This has also got, um, obviously, handcuffs and bras and panties and other things on there. Obviously made for bachelorette parties and uh, hand night parties and things like that. But as I said, I really like this little uh, mask. And I've used this a lot for cupcakes, for cookies, for uh, Mardi Gras. I've done them on cake pops. It's a really, really cute little, so even if you really only use that, um, mostly it's, it's a great little mask. Now, when we use tappets or wackets, a lot of people uh, get confused about using them because they use different, uh, try different pastes. You have to always use flour paste or gum paste or modified sugar paste to roll fondant to be comparable to gum paste or flour paste, which is what we've just have. All right, so, because generally, so a paste you'd make flours with, or as I said, um, 
modified to become stronger and dry and quick. So we work uh, going to modify this. Um, we modified it already. I'm going to add a little bit of shortening to it, vegetable fat. And what you do, going to roll this out. Remember, this is all on the download. And you always, when we use tappets or wackets, you always use number five on the pasta machine. No exceptions, it's always number five. Okay. So number five is fairly thin, but that is the perfect thickness for lettering and all sorts of types of thing. Again, I'm just going to go through the pasta machine. I've already got this. Now I've just set this to number five. I'm going to feed this through. Now because when we're using flour paste or gum paste, it's going to dry fairly quickly. A lot of times what I would do is I would cut some of my paste. I would put it into a flap. Or this is my Nicholas Lodge Flower Pro, um, the uh, uh, Stay Fresh flap, all right, the, the petal folder. So basically, you put it into there, and that what it's going to do is going to keep your paste fresh. It's going to stop it drying out. So, you know, if you're especially doing, say, 12 for 12 cupcakes for Mardi Gras, you want to cut that. The other thing when you're using tappets or wackets is you are going to cut the strip of paste, generally just a little bit wider than the project and the reason is if you have like a round strip of paste and you're cutting out a mask what it means you're going to get obviously paste stuck into the whip and also into your panties there all right which is not a good thing all right so as i said then you have to keep pulling the paste out so just as i say use that now generally when i use tappets or wackets when you're using lettering uh, that has obviously or some of the more intricate designs so again again things like you know if you were doing the handcuffs there or some of those details on lettering i usually use either a little bit of vegetable fat or this is a product a nicholas lodge product for you those of you in the us this is called easy release and this is an organic beeswax and coconut oil and lemon oil uh, product so i just put a little of that on my finger it's not quite as oily and i just put a little of that onto the edge of the cutter Whichever method you use, you just wash those in warm soapy water when you finish with them. So here, we take the cutter. This is the shape I'm going to use. So you see it goes over there. Now I have a, this is a slightly textured surface. Um, so press down, go around in a circular movement like that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a cosmetic um, sponge or a cosmetic wedge. And I just press the detail in. Now, of course, on lettering, you don't have to do anything there because on lettering, um, it it's doesn't have a design in it. But any of the FMM ones that have designs in them, um, you're going to use that technique. So you can see I have got a little paste stuck in the panty strap there, but it's taken out. So press, it, press into there, and then all you do is just whack it, all right? So that's why I call them whackets. So just show you one more time. So press that on go around, press with the cosmetic sponge, and whack it. All right, but, so, but if you use the right paste and the right thickness, you'll never have drama with these products, all right? I see on Facebook groups all the time people struggling with these, but a lot of times it's because people are rolling the paste out too thick, and uh, that's causing issues with, um, with obviously, the paste. Now, you can leave these like this, or what I find works really well is this is like a number nine piping tip. You can also buy sort of piping tips or nozzles this shape, but all I do is I just take a pair of pliers. Now, of course, once you do this, you keep it just for this purpose, but what you do is you just squash it with a pair of pliers, and that makes like an oval shape. You can also do this, for example, with a number seven as well. All right, so you can actually cut an oval shape here. And then what I will do is I will then use that to cut out the eyes. See, you could use that again on cupcakes for a little boy's birthday party, um, like the, the Incredibles, you know, there's all sorts, of course, you could use blue or red or different colored paste. Um, so that's sort of how you would make um, the eyes, the eye holes there. And then when you dry that, what I do is I just, I'm uh, just gonna dry it into the convoluted foam. Sorry, it's a bit contrasty. But you see the convoluted foam, you put it over the top of the mound, and then that gives a perfect shape for your, for your little mask. I've just got some over here. So you see the mask, this is a dry one here. This will give you a little mask. So this is perfect for so many different types of occasions. And um, 
Just to also mention, you can also take the bra. If you cut the bra straps off and cut eyes holes in there, you could do that as a little mask. And also the panties, if you take the straps off the side, turn it upside down, you've got a little like a, like a, a masquerade mask, a hat. So you could use that as a little hat. And, uh, but of course these could be done in different colors as well. So there's some fun things you can do with that uh, particular set. So that's, uh, that's how, how we would do the, the masks. All right, the little baby mask. So those, remember, will be done in the modified sugar paste or, or gum paste, or, or sugar paste or fondant, or as a black gum paste or flour paste, all right? Now moving on to the, I'm um, gonna show you the little feathers. Now these little feathers I made, these are perfect size when used with the small mask. So again, I've used these on top of a cupcake. I've done them on cake pops, I've done them on cookies and things. Uh, I'm gonna use these as a little accent around the bottom of the cake. So I'm going to use some purple flexi paste. Now this is my flexi paste, um, which is fairly new product on the market. It's a flexible um, gum paste or uh, flour paste, and it stays flexible for about a month, all right? So this is really good for things that you want to have a little bit of flexibility to, so I'm gonna show you using this for the feathers. And I do have, um, in the um, download, there is a link to my um, Nicholas Lodge IN um, website, which has frequent asked questions. It also has a video of how to uh, use the flexi paste as a video of how to make the flexi glue. That is the glue I use when I'm making flowers, or especially flowers when I'm putting them together. Um, and also uh, the recipe is a PDF as well. So I'm going to use same techniques. I'm going to use a tap it. So I'm going to put some purple through here. And uh, just going to move my mixer out of the way. Let's move that. I'll finish with that now for the moment. So I'm going to use, this is a, another tap it set from FMM um, and it's called the foliage set. And as you can see, it basically has uh, different leaves like maple leaves, ivy leaves. Uh, this can be used for feathers, um, for feathers, also leaves and things. And then these are, um, there's set, there's sort of obviously a right and a left. And these are really nice to make like laurel leaf wreaths. You can use these, I've done them on bunny, as bunny ears, on cupcakes for Easter time. Um, so I've used these for lots of different types of application. On little marzipan fruits, you could use these as small little leaves. So what I'm doing is I'm using the extra, extra large and the extra large. So this is like the small, the medium, the large, the extra large, extra, extra large, extra, extra large. So this is a triple X large, okay? That's what I'm gonna use for the bigger feather. And then I'm gonna use the extra large, which is this one here. I'm using the, the feathers, that this is again all on your instructions, that are facing to the right, okay? As you've got the cutter towards you, there. I don't have to use the vegetable fat or the easy relief on this because it's a very basic shape. You just take this on, go around. And also I don't want to have the line in the middle, it's not necessary, so I don't, this will be more like lettering. All right, so you just take that and just whack it. And I'm also going to do the small little tiny one here. This is the one I'm actually gonna use. You see this will be your pieces, all right? But the flexi paste is really great for lettering as well because you don't, again, with sometimes using traditional flour paste or gum paste, if you cut out the letters, let's say, on a Monday or Tuesday for your cakes that weekend, sometimes when you pick them up, they get very brittle. Um, this will stay flexible, so it makes wonderful for cutouts. So this works really, really good for the tappets as well. And um, I'm gonna use the Katie Sue Feather Mold. Now this is a fabulous feather mold. I'm gonna show you some large feathers, wide feathers next with this, all right? And um, so when you use this, this mold, all right, you place your, you see that almost follows the central vein. You just place it into there like that. So it follows the central vein. Now, if you're doing these, um, for example, for a cupcake or something where they're gonna stand up and you want to see the feather both sides, you can use the back of the veiner, uh, which I'll show you on the small one in a second. But if you're only gonna use them on a cookie or for example, on a cake where you only see um, the front side, you can just use your cosmetic sponge and just push this in with a cosmetic sponge there, all right? And you see this gives a really beautiful little feather. 
And then I take, I'm using here some spring action scissors. And I make some, just some little snips, some fine snips on the bottom of the feather. And then you can just do sort of periodic, just little snips where you want them to be. And you can pinch that like a taco shell. So you just pinch almost like a central vein there. And then you just would uh, then just dry that. You see, you just dry that in your crate foam, your convoluted foam. All right, now the little tiny, the little tiny one there. And the reason why I cut it out with the right hand side of the cutter is obviously that's the way we cut it out. You see then when you turn it over, then it's gonna be facing to the correct shape. All right, and then you can also use the little small feather as well. And if you were using the back veiner, you just put the back veiner on here and just press on there with the back veiner like that. And you see, and that's gonna give you your, that will vein the back and the front of the little leaf, okay, or the feather. And again, just pinch that. And you can just leave that to dry, okay? And that's how you make the, the little feathers. So the smaller feather, which was done with the extra, that's a perfect size um, for that one. You can see this is the one done with the extra, extra large. So that's obviously a little bit big to go on the mask. And uh, I'll explain about attaching those in a little while. So that's sort of how we would make, um, how we would make the, um, the feathers. So I'm showing you the components first. Next, we're gonna move on to, um, gonna show you how to make the wired feathers. So on the cake, I'm going to use um, these wired feathers that are gonna be used on my mask. And um, you can see here, these are the feathers, all right? So this is one of each size from the feather mold. So the purple one I did in the large cavity, the uh, gold one, which is made yellow, is painted gold, is done in the medium cavity, and the small one there is done in the, uh, obviously green in the small cavity. And again, I've given you um, the instructions for those. Now I'm using my flexi paste for this, um, and the flexi paste in your directions, um, I've colored this with uh, obviously the colors. Now the, um, the yellow, I've just colored white flexi place yellow. Uh, we are working on some other colors because at the moment there's a pink and a red and a green. So the yellow is just being colored with yellow food color gel color. Uh, the green, I just use a leaf green or also you can use like a Kelly green, which is a color we use a lot in the US for St. Patrick's Day. Um, just as so I've used to use a leaf green. And the purple, what I actually did to get the right purple, I used my peony pink. So this is the peony pink flexi paste, which this is a color it comes, this color. I just added some purple to this and you get a really beautiful purple color. Um, and remember, purple is the color you want, not violet, because violet is too blue. Um, purple is obviously towards the reds, okay? So, but if you start off with like, say, a peony pink and add some purple to it, it's gonna be easier to achieve the correct color. So we will get your colors. Now, in the, on the wired feathers, we're going to use the, the feather mold. Now, um, I'm gonna brush a little bit of fat or shortening into the mold. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of fat on the back of my hand and you just would brush this in to the mold. You don't have to necessarily do this with the little tiny ones, but you obviously you do the three, if you're doing one of each size, I'm just gonna show you one. And I'm gonna use here, gonna use my size guide. Now my size guide, um, it, there is a download on the nicholaslodge.com, you know, recipes and templates, you can download a size guide uh, onto cardstock and then cut around the holes. But this is uh, now commercially available, the plastic one through Katie Sue Designs. Um, so that's obviously US or UK. Um, also, if you buy any of my Flower Pro book one, two or three, um, obviously they have a size guide, a pre-cut size guide in the back of them, all right? And those of you in the US, if you're ordering anything from us, we include a size guide, a paper size guide with that. But you can make your own, obviously, from the download. Um, anyway, so we're gonna use a size guide. So we're gonna use, uh, for the um, 
feathers. For the small feathers, I'm going to use a number eight small. That means the number eight goes through the hole. The medium one, I use a number eight regular size, which is one third below, two thirds above. And then for the, the, the large, um, we're going to use a number 10, which again is when we say number 10, it means one third, two thirds above. If in your directions, so it says like, for example, eight small, that means the ball of paste physically goes just through the hole. But whereas a regular number eight for the medium or a number 10 for the large would be one third below, two thirds above. I will show you this. So we're going to then take your paste here and you're going to make your flexi paste. Flexi paste is, uh, if you watch my video um, on the link that I'm going to have on the download, um, you can, if it's a little bit uh, firm, you can just add water to it. So we add water to relax it. It's obviously a vegan uh, product, so it doesn't contain any eggs. And what we're going to do is going to roll that into a sausage about three quarters of the size of the piece you're going to do. I'm going to then take a 22 gauge wire. Now when using flexi paste, I use flexi glue. This is a glue I developed which stays flexible. So like for example, when you're making bows, I'm um, just going to show you an example here. This is a bow. This actual bow was made on March 17th when the product launched it. And as you can see, the tails of the bow are still flexible. All right, so it has that very, you can see how it actually just uh, defies gravity, but it has structural integrity. So you can watch the video to talk about all of this. But the thing is, is when you make things that you're gonna basically might have to move a few days after you've made them, if you use regular edible glue or in flour making, say egg white, it gives way because it doesn't stay flexible with the product, all right? So this is a flexi glue. It's made like a custard or a gravy, very easy to make in a microwave. It uses flexi paste and water and you're making like a roux and then you're going to add more water, and boil it, strain it just like you would custard, all right? And, uh, but it's shelf stable, keeps very well. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to make the wire approximate length of the, about nearly the length of the feather. I'm going to put some flexi glue onto this. But I use this now all the time for things. Generally, I just keep my towel, my uh, brush in a washcloth, so it's flannel. I just keeps it obviously cool and moist. All right, and then, so you stick up your sausage, and so a little bit like making a calorie center. Then you're gonna make the top slightly tapered, and you're gonna stretch this down. Now this technique, when I teach, um, relate to like milking a cow or a goat. It's a stretch, pull, stretch, tool, pull. So you're gonna take that to approximately the height of the feather. I'm gonna use my thumb. You see, I'm just curving it slightly. It would be like when you make the tropical anthurium, the spadix of the anthurium. It's just using your thumb. All right, gonna place this in the mold. Gonna press, just press it in gently with your finger. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm now going to just press in just a little bit with my con obviously cosmetic sponge. And then you can just use the back of the vein and not the part of the vein, the smooth part. That just helps to aid in pressing. And this technique I use a lot of my Flower Pro products, all right? All right, and then what we're going to do is you're just going to use your cosmetic sponge. You can come up to the top there. If you have a little excess paste, we use um, my Flower Pro Flexi Scraper. Again, like those of you in the UK, this is a Katie Sue product. You use a saw in action. So I use this a lot, like when, for example, I'm doing my ferns or my, um, for example, like a um, the uh, different leaves and things like the, uh, you've got the colors, the leaves here and the ferns, uh, you're gonna use that as a sort of scraping. So like on the dusty miller, that's the way you scrape uh, the excess paste off. And then I'm gonna take my, you can use your Dresden tool or veining tool, and you're just pushing that into all of the detail. You see how I'm just working that into the into the actual mold. And the wire will stay in the channel. It has a channel like we use on Flower Pro. 
So that gives you this. Now again, you can do, of course, if you're doing this uh, three-dimensional, we're going to use then, um, we're going to use the back vena because you're going to see the back of it. Now, so you line this up. So all you do is you line this up um, with the top and the Y wants to be in the V shape. All right, so the, the vein will go through the middle here. Flex this, take this out of the mold. And then you can use, I found what works really well is you use the, the PME cutting wheel. You can use this. So you can use this to give it to, to cut into the, if you have any little areas where your paste comes over the top there, you can just trim that off. And another way you can also do that is using your companion tool or commonly known as the, now by most of my students, as the Nick stick. And you can also use your Nick stick. That's also really, really good to get that nice detail. This comes with the Flower Pro um, Ultimate Filler Flowers, but also with this sold separately as well. And then you're just going to hollow to give you a little bit of shape. And that's how you do your, your feather, you see? And of course you can bend the feather if you want to bend the shape a little bit. And again, that can go onto somewhere to dry in the shape, all right? And you could do obviously um, the three feathers if you wanted to make three of them, it's up to you. And that's how we use the feather mold. Now just to explain, when you do the, the small one is in the directions, what you do there is we use an eight small, that means it goes through the hole. And what you do is you first of all bend the wire, so the wire actually follows the sort of the shape, just bring this off of the, so you can see that, it's, you're bending the wire to follow the shape of the central vein of the feather. Um, and so what you then do is you just press your number eight paste into there, eight small into there. All right, then you put a little bit of glue onto this. You're then going to then literally just put it onto the paste and press it into the paste. And if you need to, you can make a little tiny thin sausage green to go over a lot to cover it. Press the back veiner on, take it out because you obviously it's difficult to hook the wire and, get, and put that in there or if you make it into that shape, difficult to get that into the mold. So I found that was the easiest way to make that. And uh, that is how you would do the, um, the feathers, all right? So that's the Katie Sue feather mold. And uh, you can see here, obviously it looks beautiful. You can do all different types of feathers. So it's great for groom's cakes, uh, all different types of cakes, and uh, really nice to do different feathers uh, designs on pieces. So that's how we do the wide feathers, all right? Now next I'm gonna show you how to do uh, the pearls. And uh, so we're going to do some pearls. Now, um, something I'm going to address as well in this uh, live is uh, what, what is edible and is, is not edible, all right, inedible, all right? There's a lot of miscommunication. Uh, Sometimes people sell, vendors sell things that they put in that is edible and it's not, it's non-toxic or sometimes it's non-edible, inedible, all right? Um, on the cake, I'm going to, all of the main elements that when you cut the cake would be part of the cake that you would serve, I'm using totally edible products. Now, of course, you can buy beautiful metallic gold, which is gonna be really gold looking, but it's not edible, all right? Um, and uh, obviously luster dust, and this one I'm gonna use is the rainbow dust product. But um, I'm gonna use to show you how I do the pearls. Now for making pearls, again, there are many companies that do um, the pearl mold. This is my Nicholas Lodge one, all right? I developed a way of making pearls, which is very, very easy because I've seen people struggle um, in you know classes, sometimes or in YouTube tutorials, people showing pearls. Um, what I found these are called my um, e this is my easy uh, easiest strand of pearls mold has 10 millimeter and 8 millimeter size pearls, and I have these called the easy uh, sticks. All right, and so this is a 10 millimeter dowel rod, and this is a poly dowel, uh, which is eight millimeters, all right? So these are ultimately the size sausages you would make to go in your mold. That means you have to very little to trim off. Um, now, when you do traditional pearls, if you were just doing a wedding cake and you're putting pearls around the bottom of the cake, 
I generally just use, say, for example, 50-50 paste, half gum paste, half flour paste, or uh, um, petal paste, flour paste, and uh, sugar paste. Or I would use modified fondant for the first recipe, so 115 grams and only a quarter of a teaspoon of Tylos. So let's say you covered a cake in um, Tiffany Blue fondant and you want to make Tiffany Blue pearls, you could just modify some of the leftover fondant so you would get a perfect color match. So I'm going to use, when I do the pearls, now for the pearls, for the, um, the large pearls there, we're going to use a number 13 small. So this shows you how we measure a small size. So you can see there that means that the 13 goes just, just through the hole, all right? Whereas remember, a regular size would be about one third below and two thirds above, all right? But if you watch my lots of, lots of videos that sort of show how to use the mold. Now I'm using, um, I'm using flexi paste, all right, because those of you that own bakeries um, and, for example, want to make things in advance, a lot of cake artists or people have bakeries, but I mean Monday, Tuesday before you start baking and filling cakes, that's where you're often going to make your little figures, your flowers, your cut out lettering and things like that. So these pearls, you know, you can make, obviously you can make these at the beginning of the week because they, they still sort of stay flexible, you see? And uh, so you can make these, um, these uh, obviously, pearls several days in advance and still put them on the cake. Um, and when you're going to do the entwined effect, this is, I'm obviously going to show you the finishing of this part too. But you can see here on the cake, you can see how I've got my pearls looking like a natural uh, beads. Having the flexible paste means that you actually can use these like you would real beads, all right? So it makes a big, big difference in, the, um, in working with it. Now what you do is you're going to make it into a basic sausage. Now most of us are sausage challenged, I've had quite a lot of practice for this, but it's difficult to get an even pressure. So I have came up with a way of doing this. So I use the large stick because I'm going to show the large pearl. And what I do here is I take my fondant, uh, my fondant uh, smoother. And then all I'm going to do is, no, I actually would do that, I have it at an angle. So you see it's at an angle. And you see out the other end comes a perfect sausage. Now you can make this, you know, three feet a meter long if you wanted to. But you see this makes, makes your sausage. So if you wanted to do just like braided two colors or a graduation cake or a baby reveal cake, take your two colors, you can make this the length you want and then you just sort of entwine them together, okay? Gonna put a little bit of corn flour, corn starch on this. Take the mold. Now what I'm gonna do is gonna lay over the top of the mold like this and then I open up the mold like a hot dog bun so you see it almost like a hot dog and then the hot dog, the sausage, is just dropping into the middle here. So you see how I open it up and your sausage actually goes down. Because I've seen people do this on YouTube, so they'll take a sausage this big and try and ram it in the mold and it's not going to go in correctly. So you see you just open this up, you can have a little bit more than you need, take that off. This is um, uh, called a Dab Lace Knife. Dab is a company that do lace molds and I really like this mold. Now you can see it's got a sort of blade and it's got a rounded part. I'm going to use the rounded part of the blade just to press my paste in and then I use a sawing action. So I'm just using a sawing action. So I go from the middle to the outside. And then once we've done that, okay, next thing I do is I'm just going to take my cosmetic sponge and just press this in with a cosmetic sponge and I just rub over the top with my finger. That would just remove any little fuzzy bits that are on the edge. Now to remove these from the mold, you simply turn it over. You can see through the mold. And what I do is I use my thumb and I place my thumb and I'm just going to literally, with my thumb on top, I'm just releasing the mold from the mold like that. And you see that's your purple strand of pearls. But because the flexi paste is very flexible, all right, so even after a couple of days, you'll be able to sort of manipulate these. This is also good if you want to defy gravity, like you wanted to say, like, let's say you're doing a, a a Gatsby themed cake or something like that and you wanted pearls hanging off the edge of the cake. This has a lot of structural integrity and you can just trim 
the end one there. And then I will put this onto a piece of wax paper, parchment paper. And I'm going to paint this. Now I'm going to use uh, Rainbow Dust. There are several companies that do obviously um, edible paints. This is Rainbow Dust product, but this is totally edible. So personally, when I'm doing a cookie, a cake pop, and something that somebody's going to consume, I also make sure I use everything totally edible. I never want to tell a client you have to remove the unicorn horn because it's got a wire in it. That's where I would use, for example, a piece of spaghetti. And uh, these also come in, uh, some of you are familiar with this brand. Uh, these are called Click Twist brushes. So this, uh, this brand, obviously, this is a uh, Click Twist brush, all right, so you can just brush this on. Um, I find it's more economical to buy the pots. You can just give it a little shake. And if it does get a little thick, you can add a little couple of drops of vodka to it as well. But just kind of thicken. And the nice thing about this is water soluble. And then you just would paint over the pearls, all right? So you just would paint over the pearls. I'm not going to do the whole whole lot of those, but just good. And you can do a second coat if you want to. All right, so you can do two coats on this. Um, I found personal experience with this product. All right, when it's dry, you could do a second coat, but also don't come back on yourself. When you get to the end, if you start painting again, the gold will come off. You just brush generally in one direction with the product, and don't come back and re. It's better to leave it dry a little bit and then you paint it. Um, also, when you make pearls in gold, you're always going to start off with yellow. If you were making, for example, silver pearls, um, you would uh, obviously start off with gray. All right, so just use the gray pro gel. And you have your product, the pearls, uh, there. And uh, then when you do the small ones, you would use, obviously, uh, but this is just water soluble, so just put it into a little container of water, and I'll clean this later. But it's very, very easy cleanup. All right. Um, now, when I do the purple pearls. When I did the purple pearls, you can see that these are still sort of flexible. So you see, can you manipulate it like you would real pearls? What I painted those with, I did these in the purple. I used just a luster dust. All right, this is an edible luster dust. Let me get a little spoon here. Of course, for white pearls, I usually use a white sparkle. Um, I have in my Nicholas Dodge dust in powder's white, but it's got slightly bigger particles. That's what I generally use when I do white pearls, and uh, I paint them. I don't ever recommend you put the um, put the uh, actual uh, uh, color into the mold. Some manufacturers recommend you dust the pearl, the mold with pearls um, dust, and the problem is you'll never get rid of it. I will take uh, my brush here, and I'm going to use. Here. Now, a lot of people, when they paint with pearl, uh, pearl dust, use vodka. I personally like to use lemon extract. This is Nielsen Massey, which is the best vanilla company in the world. Uh, in pastry, this is all I use. Um, lemon extract is basically high grain alcohol, which means it's going to evaporate very quickly, but also it's got natural oil of lemon. All right. And so, what happens when the alcohol evaporates, the oil that's left is going to keep your, your pearl dust, your uh, pearlized dust, with a nice luster on it. All right, it dry, dries very quickly, so I use a little dropper. And then I'm going to paint that. So you just would paint that onto the pearls. All right, this one I've already done, but you just, uh, just paint over the pearls. And then the green pearls, it says in your directions, in the green pearls, I just use the, um, the green paint. All right, so I just use the green uh, uh, food, metallic food paint. All right, but remember, those are totally edible. Um, so there's a, you know, those are things you have to consider. Because sadly, sometimes on the internet, when I see on Instagram or on Facebook, I see people's cakes, you know, people do sort of things using things that really you shouldn't consume a large quantity, they're non-toxic. Non-toxic means it's not harmful, but it shouldn't be consumed in large quantities. So a little tiny bit of pearl dust or sometimes other metallic dust is okay to consume and not painting a whole of a cake. That's where I would always recommend to the customer we could do a cake dummy and that tier would be a dummy. All right, um, so the, you do your pearls. Um, you can also, of course, do fun things. You know, here I've done like two purple, two yellow, or gold and two green. All right, so they would be like then Mardi Gras beads. You could have that going around the cake. But there's also fun things you can do for baby showers, graduation cakes and all sorts of things there. 
when you attach the pearls to the cake, I'm going to just, just sort of show you basically how I attach them. Um, so you will put the pearls around the bottom of the cake. You might have to come with front camera, Scott. And I'm going to use some piping gel. So actually I can tip, tip the cake a little bit. There we go. There we go. We should be okay with overhead now. And just going to use some piping gel. Just going to put a line of piping gel around the bottom. So if around the bottom of the cake, because obviously I was showing you using flexi paste for the feather and things, you could just use a yellow modified sugar paste or rolled fondant. All right, but so you see, you're just going to take the with these, and we'll put these, put those on. And of course, when you're going around a cake like this, when you're going around the surface of the cake, just took the ribbon off, you can, um, oop, sorry, just knock my little ribbon off here, there we go. Put that on. So I would have got the trim on the bottom there. But you can, um, of course, when you put it around the, the cake, they're gonna open up, so you can also go back in and touch those up. A little bit as well. I'm just going to put a little bit more piping gel into there. But these were actually made. Um, these were made four days ago. These pearls. So you see, they're still flexible. That you know can still. So that's where it's very convenient to use. Just going to put a couple of pearls to finish off there. All right. And then when I, um, when I'm going to, when I put like, for example, like the, these ones here, I want these to sort of snake around. So that's where you can just use, put those on where you want them to go. You can use a little bit of uh, piping gel. I'm, when I want smaller amounts of piping gel, I'm using a little needle tip applicator. And I can just put a little bit of piping gel just onto there. And that would be how you would do the, the pearls around there. So of course, you know, you could go all the way around the, the cake with that. Just using the tilt and turn table there. All right, so we're going to, um, so just continue just the last little bit on the bottom here. So you can then add some obviously pieces to your base of your cake. So when you do, um, like for example, when I'm doing the masks and I, like for example, these little, so this is where like the, the gold pen, they, they work well because you can just use, but you see how when I'm doing this, I'm only going in one direction. So you see, I'm gonna go around just, just on the edge of the mask with the gold. And then I do the same. Because you're doing it also on black, then we can leave that to dry for a couple of minutes and then go back in and redo that. So those will be ready. And I've got, um, I'm gonna do some extruded pieces. I'm just gonna move this out of the way. I'm going to use an extruder. This is a clay extruder, Makin's brand. Um, there are different clay extruders, this is the one I like. And I just have this small ribbon. Alternatively, you could also roll out some paste and uh, use through the pasta machine on usually number four and then cut strips with a strip cutter. But I'm going to use this to make some little like a curly cue, like little party streamers. These are fun to use for birthday cakes, all different types of cakes. And again, you see with the flexi paste, this sort of a, this a little bit like a spring. You see how this is three days old and you can actually use it. So like, for example, on a cupcake, you'd have it sort of looks really natural. Scott, how could you help me with the time? One minute. And then we're going to just kind of Put the paste through. And 
and then we're going to just bring this together and then all I do is just going to extrude some paste you see this it just extrudes a strip and then you can use this um, cut in pieces then you can use for example like either a wooden dowel or like a stick you know like something like this just to go around um, and all I do is just twist that around and just take that take that off and then you can just cut with a pair of scissors okay and then just pop that onto now again you know I will usually with my flexi paste just will put this in the food dehydrator to leave that to dry for a few minutes and I also use that um, technique to to apply the um, the sort of the strings of the the masquerade mask so when you do the strings of the masquerade mask what you do is you let this dry a little bit so it's gonna it's gonna have a little bit of uh, sort of you see how it sort of held its shape a little bit and I would use a little bit of flexi glue So a little bit of flexi glue here. And then I would just on the side of the cake, I would use a little bit more flexi glue to hold that. And you can, for example, you can use a pin. So you can pin this into the side. Because remember you can I won't really notice, but you can pin that into the side of the cake. I'm just going to tip this slightly so you can see. But you see how that can defy, it would defy gravity. You can see how the one the other side of the cake, but you see how that's actually completely suspended away from the cake, you see? And it's going to hold its shape. And, um, but still is, is still, fl so that's again, this, this one is three, three days old. So you see, it's, I can still flex it. So it gives her, for a lot of things like tails of ribbons and things like that, it's really, really uh, gives a very natural look to, to the piece. Now I've got, um, I've got my sort of components onto here. Because of time, I'm going to, I will fi finish this off, all right? Um, and obviously we're going to be posting photographs with a download. But basically you are just sort of attach, you know, you can put ribbons, uh, you can put little feathers and things like that. Obviously you can do... Um, here now the little green dots there because then that will be totally edible that is just the green food art pen uh, paint and I just used a toothpick all right so just use the point of a toothpick and I'm still going to use some of those now um, you can also of course um, on uh, the, the so really the whole of the bottom of that cake all right that whole of that bottom part of the cake is totally edible um, and uh, so obviously there's no problem with obviously consuming that because it's all edible paint um, but on your, when you're doing things like on the mask, so when you're doing on the mask here, now this is where, for example, this is an off piece, I can uh, be a little bit more, I say, flexible with what I use because this wouldn't be consumed by the customer. This would be taken off and it would then be uh, kept, all right? And so when you're doing, um, when you're doing the, the mask, Now in your directions, I've given you all of the, uh, this information. Obviously just try to cover as many different techniques as possible. Um, this product here is used a lot, um, but unfortunately it's often used for things that it shouldn't be used for. Uh, like for example, I've seen people do chocolate dipped strawberries put into this, so the whole strawberry is covered with this. This is hologram dust or sometimes called disco dust. And this is generally used for very small embellishments. All right, like for example, like on this, see this photograph of this cookie here, 
um, in the middle of that lettering, I've got three little tiny dots that look almost like rhinestones or, or diamonds, all right? So for things like that, if you're doing quilting on the side of a cake and you're gonna do a little tiny dot of the product, that's okay to eat, but you wouldn't consume a whole amount, like I said, a strawberry dipped in this product, all right? There are, of course, edible glitters, which are not gonna be as iridescent as shiny as this, but as I said, they will work. Now, what I've done um, is I've used, a, I've created a, a custom Mardi Gras mix. So what I've done here is I've used equal amounts of the purple, gold, and green and you just do a little small spoon. I use these products a lot, and they're a little pinch, smidgen, and uh, dash spoon. So these are really useful. You can use little coffee stirrers, coffee spoons, little plastic spoons, I think, but these are good for the small amounts. But you just put a little bit of each of those colors in. And you can do that, for example, so for Christmas time, you can do a sort of a holiday mix. So this is gold, red, and green, and uh, it's really, really uh, fun, fun to do these techniques. I'm going to put a little bit of, so I've got this mixed already. I'm going to show you a couple of things you can do with this. So if you put the product into a little container, now it can be a disposable container, obviously something you can keep. So obviously if there's a one you're going to keep, you want to have something more, it's not going to be uh, exposed to the air. And then we're going to take a little bit of piping gel So I'm going to put, add a little bit of piping gel to the product. And you see I'm actually mixing the piping gel through. And you see this makes basically like you've got the Mardi Gras colors in the piping gel. So this is going to go into a piping bag. You can do it with a piping nozzle or tip like I've got here a number two, or you can just use, um, obviously, just a parchment bag. And I'll do this on the table so it's a little bit easier to see. But you can do, um, for example, with this product, you can use this to... And it's very fluid, it's easy to pipe with. But you see, you get this sort of beautiful effect. Now, um, I also use that same product, for example, for stenciling like on a plaque, all right? I wouldn't do this for a cookie, all right, because it's too much of the product, but what I did there is I just took the fleur de lis stencil. This is a fleur de lis stencil, and then I've put this um, on the top. So when you're doing, say, like a happy birthday stencil or a 25th wedding anniversary, you could do this with silver or gold, but you see how you get this beautiful, so I use this for stenciling technique as well. But using some of the edible products, you can use that technique. All right, it's just, uh, as I said, also, of course, each country varies as well, but you can use this for little dots. When you're doing quilting on a cake, you do little dots in the quilting on the side of the cake. So that's, so that's one, one uh, product that you can use on that. And then you can also, um, when I do the, sorry, let's go ahead here. And you can also use um, the same product, mix it with the, Yeah. So take a little bit of the product and we're going to mix that with um, some confectioner's glaze. Now confectioner's glaze comes in big bottles, all right? So something we use to obviously glaze for berries and things like that. So we're going to use a little bit of confectioner's glaze. And what I do is going to put a little bit of the, the I usually do this in a disposable container unless it's a color you're going to use a lot. And then I'm going to take confectioner's glaze. I'm going to put some glaze into there. I usually use a dropper bottle. I'm using an Asian toothpick. These are cocktail sticks or Asian toothpicks. So it's got a square end on them. 
you're going to mix this up so almost really it's going to be like a nail polish consistency. And then you can either use the, once you get that, you can use the large end of this. You can make large, like little rind type rhinestone type of thing, or you can use the small one. You can use the pointed end of this as well. But remember, a customer wouldn't eat the mask, they maybe would keep that as a keepsake, but you see how that can make little like rhinestone embellishment. Now if you use silver, all right, so if you're doing like an anniversary cake or a wedding cake, see that's where the square end of the tooth pack, that's where the pointed end of it, you can make like little diamantes or rhinestones, all right, like diamonds. This is I use a lot like when I teach my fondant class and that's what I showed you on the cookie that I had uh, that showed how to do that. And then the last use of that product is that you can take, for example, pearls, so you can use, for example, candy pearls. These are made from candy. These are rice starch ones, like black ones. And if you put them into a little bag, all right, so you put them into a little plastic bag. Now again, um, just, just really tips I'm gonna share with you, which I share with all my students. Um, for example, I've um, seen a lot of videos where people say, you know, when you make pearls, you just put vodka in. Vodka isn't gonna seal the pearl. So when you do colored pearls, I always use confectioner's glaze. All right, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take the bag with the size pearls you want to make, and I'm going to put a little of my dust into here. All right, I'm going to put a little bit of the dust. And then I will, what I will do is I will take the confectioner's glaze, um, which I have the bottle. There we are. So with your confectioner's glaze, take a couple of drops. I find this doesn't work with spray lacquer or spray glaze. And I just put a couple of drops of the into there and you're then going to shake them. And then what we do is you're going to put those out on some parchment paper. And you see this gives me my, this gives me like Mardi Gras uh, beads. Now, if you did, if you did black ones with just green, this gives you green, you could do purple or you could do gold like this. All right, and then you can also, for example, these are larger ones they made. But you see they have that beautiful sort of glitter effect. Onto them. So again, for, for, um, these I would recommend, you know, use them on something like a mask or an embellishment or something that you could obviously take off, all right? But as I said, it's just giving you ideas of how to use the uh, products um, in different ways. So of course you can take, with the pearls, you can take those and use those as embellishment. So you can see here on the finished one, I've got, um, I've got obviously I've added them with a little piping gel, a green and a purple one there. And I've also used some little tiny um, uh, gold dragees and non pareils. And for those I'm going to use just a little bit of piping gel. I've got so many different things on the table here. So, so, gets, uh, so with your piping gel, I'm using a little needle tip appli applicator there. And so see, you know, when you're doing the small ones, you can use, use piping gel, little dots, because it's neutral. And then taking like, these are the little, uh, called uh, non-pareils, little tiny. This is a, a Drage pickup tool. Um, it's actually made, the purpose of this is for diamond painting, but you have, Think of like an apple core. This is a wax, an orthodontic dental wax. Going to put a little plug of wax into this product, and this means that you can then pick up the pick up the product on the wax, and you're just going to put this on to here like this. So this is really good when you're doing beading. 
And these are edible um, little uh, non-pareils, all right? These are done with a gold luster, okay? And uh, so you can see you can do like embellishment on, the, on there. And then I've got, um, finish this off. You see I did the, um, like the hologram dust dots around here. I've got pipe in here. You can see the little uh, ring. And I've also done a fleur-de-lis. This is painted with, um, the fleur-de-lis is painted with um, a metallic gold. So this is an inedible gold, all right? So this, because it's obviously a very shiny, looks like real gold, but you use these for off pieces. And again, um, sharing little tips with you. Um, again, a lot of people use vodka. Um, I never use vodka when I paint with metallics. I use two things. Um, I use uh, orange oil or lemon oil. All right, this is a natural orange oil. This is an artificial flavored oil, lemon or orange oil. Um, or you can use, uh, for example, um, you can also use confectioner's glaze. Now, if you handle this, when you are working with, for example, your fingers, if you put gloves on, latex or vinyl gloves, um, you can handle items, but because of the natural oil in our skin, if I was to pick up this fleur-de-lis, which is painted with orange oil, the gold will come off on my fingers. But if it, the thing is already on the cake, you can paint it directly onto the cake. Um, but um, the orange oil or lemon oil goes on very, very fluid. And uh, so you take your, so this is a set is a gold highlighter. So this is recommended to use for off pieces. Um, again, several companies do this. And all I do is take then the orange oil that we'll put into this. And you can keep this, if you use like a, a uh, good uh, little container like this, I can put the lid on and I can just keep that and use it time and time again. You see, and then when you take the, the oil, like if you were, for example, painting, the, painting this, you see this goes on like this. All right, and that's how you would paint. But, um, so, but if you want to do something you need to handle, like lettering or figures or anything like that, some little decoration on a cake, you need to handle it. All you do there is you mix the gold powder with confectioner's glaze. And what that will do, it will set, almost think of like a lacquer, it's going to then not come off. Um, but the, uh, the thing with that is, is if you do that, you want to use a disposable brush and throw it away, or you need to use like a brush cleaner um, like this product here. And again, in the UK, you have several companies that have this type. It's basically like a thinner, a glaze thinner and cleaner because you, it's not water soluble product. All right, so you have to use um, a product that you can obviously uh, clean up the brush. This is just a little bit of washing up liquid dish soap and you can clean that, put the lid on, put it in a Ziploc bag, keep that for next time you need it. So that is using the, um, using the gold. So last little part. So I'm going to attach the uh, decoration. So leaves will literally just be put on and I'll uh, finish that part off. I just wanted to show you. And I've attached the um, fleur-de-lis onto the mask. So I've obviously attached that. I use a little bit of uh, softened fondant. And fondant, um, if you take fondant and just mix with water, so literally you just take some water with a spray bottle and add that to the fondant, you can use that to stick decorations on, like the little uh, ribbons and, uh, for example, the, the um, things like the feathers. So what we do there, I've got this in a piping bag. So this is just fondant and water. And then I'm going to use that to attach the... Just going to clean off my station here. going to bring in my cake so I can show you the final stage of that. So around the bottom, so I'm just going to say I'll attach the feathers and things so you can just put as many of those as you want. Um, I'm going to attach a little, so I'm going to attach a fleur-de-lis, all right? Um, so I'm going to put a fleur-de-lis on there. So you see you pick that up with, with tweezers. All right, so uh, if you picked it up with your tweezers, then you'll be able to place that in position where you want it to go. And uh, just attach that with a little bit of the softened paste. So see, I'm just putting a little bit of purple onto there. Remember, don't use your fingers. 
And you see, I've just got. Now that means that that one element would have to be removed before you serve the cake. I mean, when the cake is cut and served, that fleur, the very metallic fleur de lis, would obviously be removed. All right. Um, strictly speaking, you shouldn't consume um, such a large amount as that. Um, but as I said, you put that on. Now, what I have on the top of the cake, I've put a straw. This is just a, co a cocktail straw, just a thin cocktail straw. So I just made a hole um, with my scribe needle. All right, and I put that into there. So I've pushed that in. So just I've already got that ready. And then I'm going to use, going to put a little bit of softened fondant. So a little dot of softened fondant or piping gel around there. And when you're putting on the larger pearls, for example, these ones here, you can use beading tweezers. These are silicone beading tweezers. So we'll just put those on. So I've got those three pieces there. So obviously once your ribbons, um, once your ribbons are dry, you take that, that off, all right, because they, they're obviously a little fine. And so this is ready for the mask to go on. So obviously I planned this so that I obviously planned where everything was going to sit. So I have the mask is going to sit on the front of the cake here like that. So you see this would be looking like almost the ribbons are going through the hole there. And of course you could use real ribbon if you wanted to as well. I just like um, the fact that somebody doesn't have to sort of pull the ribbon off uh, to eat that. Now I'm going to use a little bit of softened fondant. So you see this is the same color as the cake which means that it's going to, it will um, And if any squashes out, you can just remove the excess. But what that means is it's going to be the same color. So you stick that on and that's going to give a really good set the mask in place. Let's say I've got a couple of got a couple of things to go on the bottom. I will finish this off for the photograph there. The feathers, what I've done is I've um, taped tape these with gold floral tape. This is gold floral tape. Um, if you don't have gold floral tape, you can buy black floral tape. You could also use white floral tape and paint those gold. So you see, I've just put the group of three feathers together like this, and they will go into the top here. So they're gonna just go into position here like that. See, and because these are flexible, see, I can, can bend these. You see, they sort of uh, makes it really, really easy when you put these together. So I'm just going to go in a little bit further. There we are. That's where I planned those to go here like this. And as I said, a couple of things to finish off at the bottom, but gives you the idea of um, obviously of what the Mardi Gras themed cake would look like. So um, I hope you enjoy the rest of uh, Cake International Carnival. Uh, this has been Chef Nicholas Lodge. And uh, as I said, um, I hope you enjoyed this. I will answer questions. So just post any questions in the comments and I will post those, uh, re um, obviously answer those. And remember, as I said, download on nicholaslodge.com, download the whole the instructions for everything that I've gone through, a lot of details in there, information. And until next time, sweet wishes, stay safe, everybody. Bye.